We'll be using the Arduino software to program our embedded projects. I'd like to give you a brief tour. First, the definition of IDE is Integrated Development Environment. And by that, it means it's one package that handles editing, compiling, and downloading your code. So this is a free package available from the Arduino uh, organization itself. And it's available for a variety of platforms, including Windows, Linux, and Mac. Um, the most current version happens to be 1.8.13. Any relatively recent version will be just fine for our purposes. So if you've not installed this, please download it for your machine and get it running. Um, the actual application comes up as a single window uh, in which with a large code editor. And let's just sort of walk through some of the basic features. Um, first of all, the editor here is, as you might expect, for editing kind of the text-based Arduino code that will download. Um, and those critical things are right here in front of you. So there's a verify button which is the leftmost checkmark button. And what that does is it runs the compiler. The Arduino IDE includes the compiler that translates your text-based program into the machine code that actually runs on the Arduino micro microprocessor chip. And then it also includes a number of other things that we're going to go through here. So what we see here is we look down in the bottom uh, compiler output window. Uh, there's no error messages reported. It gives us a brief status update that we our very simple sketch uses a small amount of memory and a relatively small amount of program memory. So that worked. If I had some kind of syntax error, I'm just going to introduce a syntax error and I hit verify, I get some kind of error messages down here in the, in the lower uh, compiler output window that might give me a guide as to correcting my mistake. So I'll undo that. This, the second most important button here is right adjacent to it, which is upload. So this does several things. First, it, it compiles your program, gets it ready for running, but then it also tries to communicate with the embedded, with the connected Arduino, transfer the program into its, into its flash memory, and then allows it to run. So before we can do that, we do need to check a few things. First, if we look at the tools menu, um, we have a selection of the board type. There are many, many, many different variations of the Arduino that we can possibly program with the IDE. We're just using the Uno, which is one of the basic ones. And so make sure that that is set to Uno. The second thing is specific to your computer. If you look under port, there's a way to select uh, which serial port over USB the Arduino is connected to. There might be a variety of different selections here on your machine. Windows will have the form of COM and a number, like COM11, COM9. Uh, on a Mac, that will be a slash dev slash something. In general, we recommend using the CU devices. Actually, this is the only ones that are shown here. So it tries to hint to you which is the Arduino. You can have more than one Arduino connected and then you can select which of them the ID connects to. So here I've picked a physical Arduino, Arduino plugged into a hub on my, on my Mac. So with those things set up now, if I click on Upload, uh, it compiles the program, and it uploads and runs. Now let's just do that again and watch it from the Arduino's perspective. Here's the actual Arduino plugged into the computer right now. Uh, and if I click on Upload, we'll see there's some flashing of the lights as the program is actually transferred down to the down to the Arduino. To see what's going on there, let's look at one very specific thing. First of all, this black uh, how this black box here is the package that contains the actual microcontroller that you're programming. This is an Atmel uh, uh, chip that has a built-in CPU and I/O and the flash memory for your program and the, the RAM for running. It's all in this in this package. And most of the pins on the board are really just extensions of that package out where you can reach them. This other smaller square package here next to the USB connector is, an, is a second microprocessor that is used for communicating over USB. You don't have direct access to it. It receives data over USB um, and then has a connection on using only two wires uh, to the main chip. So just to put this in perspective, the USB is a USB 1.1 that can transmit at 12 megabits per second to your host computer. The connection between the USB controller and the main CPU is much, much slower, typically 115 kilobaud, or about one eighth of a megabit per second. You can sometimes go to about twice that, maybe a quarter of a megabit per second, but it's a much slower connection. So this explains kind of that the computer is talking to the USB controller, which is then retransmitting into the, into the actual main microcontroller. It turns out there's a small bootstrap program on there that's waiting to receive your program that never is overwritten, that receives your program and writes it into the rest of, rest of flash memory. Once it's in flash memory, it's there to stay. From then on out, as, whenever the chip gets power, it will run and your program is running. And we can see right now there's a built-in LED on the board here that's blinking. That's our program running, blinking the LED. 
these lights right next to that, TX and RX, simply show the data that's transmitted between the USB controller and the main chip. And when that, that means that when I hit update, and I'll do it again, we're actually seeing the flashing of the data going uh, back and forth. It's very short because this is a small program uh, between the host computer, USB, into the microcontroller as it's reprogrammed. If you don't see these lights flashing, something's wrong. These are the kinds of basic tells that tell you that the system is working. Now let's go back to the IDE and look at a couple more features. First, uh, you can have multiple windows and easily switch between them. So let's look, I'm going to bring up another one of the sort of standard lecture uh, sketches here and just go ahead and upload that and so let's see what happens. This one does use the serial port. It initializes the serial port uh, to get some data out. Now, the next bit of debugging here is we have access to a serial monitor up here in the right. I click on serial monitor, that little icon, I'll get a separate window which shows the text output from the Arduino over the serial port. First thing to note is there are a selection of baud rates possible that control the, uh, the, the rate at which data is, is sent by that between those two chips on the board. I'm using 115, uh, 200. That's my typical fast debugging rate. And it's sort of the, one of the faster rates that's, that's known to work well. Um, and we can see there's a long string of numbers being printed out by this sketch. The sketch is uh, just using the clock to uh, calculate a, a phase value that's applied through the sine function, and then the value is printed out. There's also a plotter, which is very handy. If your data is of this form, just a long string of numbers, um, if you look on the tools menu, there is a, I'm sorry, a serial plotter option, which brings up a separate window which just tries to read that text from your Arduino and plot it as a graph. This is a very handy way of getting some kind of visual output from a program. As long as you have just sort of simple numeric output, this will parse it and show you uh, how your data is changing. So those are sort of some essential debugging tools for using the, um, using the Arduino IDE. Let's walk through very quickly through a couple more things. Um, first of all, there's a lot of built-in example code. On the file menu, there's a separate entry for examples, which has a whole tree of sample code provided by the Arduino uh, uh, Foundation. That is, uh, some of these have been around for a long time, but they show a lot of different examples of basic usage. There's also a little of examples for different boards and different special pieces of hardware. You may not have this hardware, um, and for other specific libraries that you may or may not have running. So there's a lot of sample code available, and it's, I encourage you to read lots of it. Reading other code is a great way to learn programming style as well as tips and techniques. Um, second is there are ways of bringing in third-party libraries very conveniently now. Um, if you look on the sketch menu, there's an include library feature, which allows you to just in one step choose a, a library to include in your sketch. So for example, if I click on servo, uh, it, it automatically includes the include servo line that will bring in those definitions for the servo library. If you look further down there under include library, I'm sorry, at the top there is an entry called manage libraries. Um, this gives you easy access to a, a wide array of third party libraries, which can be, it's taking a long time to come up here. Here we go, a, a wide array of third party libraries, um, which can be uh, downloaded and installed in your IDEA uh, very easily. Um, using this kind of uh, built interface. So if you have some hardware and you're not sure how you might want to interface to it, um, so for example, if I, this is all running very slowly because it's the first time I've run this here, I type in NeoPixel, for example, I get some Adafruit libraries that are, that are uh, meant for um, running the NeoPixel LED arrays and I can, with one click, install those and have those available. So that's a very convenient way to bring in third-party code. Um, and it will automatically place it into the right location on your, on your machine. Um, one last bit of uh, very useful functionality, which I strongly recommend you use, is the editor is not necessarily, uh, well, the editor will let you uh, kind of add code arbitrarily. And then um, to make it more readable again, I strongly recommend that you go to the tools menu and use the auto format. It will re-indent your code according to some conventional rules which makes it vastly more legible, especially with nested structure of if and the if then and, and various blocks. Having the auto format provides a consistent indentation, which makes it much easier to read and understand exactly your block structure. So that's the essentials of how to um, use the IDE. 
Um, that's enough to get you going on, on things. There's obviously other features, um, uh, but that's enough for right now.